Hi guys and welcome back to another fly fishing video. So today I've come to Farmoor Reservoir to fish with Ben Worley and what we're going to do is explore some summer fishing tactics so you can keep catching trout. So without further ado, let's get into it. Fishing summer tactics from a drifting boat can be a lot of trial and error. Having a boat partner employing a different tactic can help you quickly find the fish. Despite appearances, we've had some of the hottest spring weather England's ever had and the water temperatures are coming up and up. I believe it's around 17 degrees in the upper layers. So what I've decided to do today is my open gambit is to fish a lot deeper. So I've set up with a 10 foot for a 7 rod. I've got an Airflow 7-8 competitor on and I'm going to fish a single booby on a seven foot leader. Now, why such a short leader, you might ask? Well, the line itself will take the fly down fairly fast. We've not got much wind at the moment, so I'm hoping to be fishing really slowly on the deck. But as well as that, once I've cast out, I'm going to keep in touch with my flies in case it intercepts any feeding fish in the column. So that's what I've started with, a very simple setup, but I'm hoping it is going to be effective. So let's ask Ben what he's set up with today and why he's done so. He fishes far more, a lot more than I do, and he'll have a better insight into fishing during the summer. Far more this time of the year, the first hour or two when it's overcast like this, you'd expect to get a few on dries. Normally you'd see the fish cruising around in the surface, um, feeding quite confidently, but this morning, I think we've seen one fish, so that, that method's gone in the bin uh, and instead I've opted for a 10 foot fast tip, which is one of the snowby lines, with a 20 foot leader, three buzzers and then a weighted cat bug as like an attractor and an anchor on the tip. So the idea is that that will fish really, really steep angle, I'll, I'll, I'll fish it very slowly if not static and uh, it should be covering between 20 and 30 feet of water. So that's the zone I'm looking to hang the flies in fish them nice and static, that natural presentation you want with the buzzers as well, vertically and static. So I'm hoping that that outfishes Lindsay's method. What we've brought along today, this is Ben's, it's a, a thermometer and uh, it's an underwater thermometer so you can attach a piece of cord to it and you can plumb the depths and try and find that sweet spot in the thermocline where the trout are going to be comfortable sitting. Because in the upper layers, in this hot water, you may see fish on the surface but they're often in distress or they're trying to shake gill lice. So trying to catch them fish in the surface can be really difficult so if you've taken plumbed the depths with your thermometer try and find the coolest part of the column and then fish at that depth now it's still very early in the morning and um, the, the one thing I would say if you're going to come out in a boat for any amount of time more than two or three hours you definitely need to get some sunblock on now I often joke being Scottish that I need a boiler suit and a balaclava but in all seriousness the sun can do some serious damage this is a a product I found years ago and it was suggested to me by a boy that goes bone fishing a lot you put it on in the morning and that's it for 10 hours. It's called P20. It's the, not the cheapest sunblock you'll find, but it's absolutely superb and it does protect you. The other thing I would say is make sure you've got a minimum of a litre and a half of water. I, uh, I tend to drink a lot of water because if I don't, the gout comes and that's not very pleasant. Oh, you're joking! <laughs> Thank you. 
making a video on how not to do it, Ben. Jesus. I thought you were going to blow that again, you know. Well, the sun's really taking its time coming out, but I've lathered up in the sunblock anyway, and we're still on our first drift. So what's happened so far? Ben had a few tentative takes, and he did catch and lose a fish. Uh, I hadn't yet cast a line, so I was thinking, oh, maybe, maybe Ben's got it right, but... Once I'd finished doing bits and bobs to camera, my very first cast, I had a fish. Now at the time, I was fishing the DI-7-8 competitor. Now, some of you might not know what that is. It's basically a uh, DI-7 with a uh, DI-8 on the front end. Airflow manufacture these, and you get a particular profile while you're fishing. So I had one straight away. I'd barely cast 20 feet with a line. So what I did next, was a change to my DI-5 sweep. And what I'll, the idea behind that was that I was going to get the fly to fish down through the water column and then back up again. And I've just had another fish there. So Ben's now scrambling to change his setup and I think he's going to try and start fishing a little bit deeper. Well, that's Ben starting to get his method working. He's just taking another fish. But I'd like to pause for a moment just to ask if you would consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps with the old YouTube algorithm and encourages me to make more videos. So why don't you reach down to the bottom right-hand corner of your screen and just give that subscribe button a little tickle. I would really appreciate your support. So we're starting to get some consistent sport, Ben and I. Um, actually... The fish I've got on at the moment is pulling the boat around on the drogue, which is remarkable really. I'll be quite interested to see what size of fish it is. Uh, it's probably a two pound skerret, but you never know. So what I'm doing is uh, I've stuck with the DI-5. I've, I've kind of changed my flies through just to see if different colours make a difference. And I've just gone to a gold ash cat's whisker booby that's what's taking this fish so what have i been doing basically i'm casting out the di5 i'm straightening everything up and then i'm figure of eighting my line let's get him in the net and then just keeping up with it and basically what's happening is every now and again i'll put a strip into the line the booby will be brought down and that's very often when the takes are coming. And there we've got some far more silver. Now, in the early months, you can catch fish and you can simply just get them straight back. But at this time of year, if you're returning fish, you must ensure you spend the necessary amount of time recovering the fish. So what I'm doing is I'm just letting the fish get its breath back in the net. And then once I'm sure it's ready to go, I'll release it back into the water. Now, Ben's going to explain to you how he's managed to increase his catch rate as the day's wearing on a little. So days like today really are all about getting the depth right and early on I think I had the depth right but I didn't quite realise that I did. So Lindsay took two fish quite quickly, you know, higher up than where I was fishing um, and I, I lost a fish of only about a third of the way back on the retrieve which suggests they were higher up. So I took my long fast tip off, put a floater on, didn't get a touch, uh, played about the point fly, still didn't get a touch, went back to what I started on and I think I've had three fish and lost two or three as well since then. So it's worth having, always worth having a look because if you get just the smallest changes in, in the depth can make a big difference in how many fish you can catch but on this occasion I've ended up back where I started. Well, so far so good. Uh, ben and I are having some consistent sport. We've caught a few fish. And what's happened, which has been a relief really, is the cloud cover that was supposed to disappear around half 10, 11 o'clock is just about still with us. And it's, uh, I say a relief because you can still feel the heat, but it doesn't seem to be putting the fish off. They are, as we suspected, feeding very deep. They're on the deck and we're, we're catching them using two different methods. I've stuck pretty much with the single booby on fast sink lines. I have changed between a five sweep to a DI-9 and I'm now on the DI-7 sweep. 
and I'll see if that produces. I've only been fishing it for a short time. It's been a fantastic and the fish are fighting so hard. The farm moor can be really proud of their stocked fish. They've, they've given us a fair tussle today. Well, over the years of doing the YouTube channel, and I think I'm about uh, four years into it now, I've been offered lots of different sponsorship deals, but uh, a lot of the stuff I've been asked to sponsor has got absolutely nothing to do with fly fishing. Companies that want me to sell coffee grinders and coffee percolators or office chairs, I don't think you'd be particularly interested in that. So I was absolutely over the moon when Ben Worley from Uphaven Fly Fishing offered to sponsor a couple of the videos. I have used and still use products from this company. It has been refreshing to see it grow in both reputation and size and it's good to know that it's manufactured and distributed in the UK. The company started out with just foam and foam cutters which were both excellent and now it has grown into a business that sells not only fly tying materials but high-end tackle as well. I will leave a link in the description below for you to have a look at Uphaven Fly Fishing's website. It's a fantastic site, it's been well laid out, easy to navigate and I'm sure there's something there that will catch your eye. Well I've, I've got to say I'm really surprised that the day is going a lot better than I expected. When I looked at the weather forecast I thought we might have a chance of a couple of fish in the morning and then the afternoon it's going to get really tough but employing the two different methods so Ben's method with a team of flies on a fast sink tip and my method with a fast sinking line and a single booby have both produced uh, well over a dozen fish to the boat now and I think we've been lucky with the weather to be fair the cloud covers remained and we are still catching fish. So what now? What I want to do is try something a little bit different. I know this method's working, but I would quite like to try maybe a midge, a midge tip line with a team of buzzers and see how I get on for there. So Ben, you're in the middle of changing now. What are you going to do? Uh, <laughs> I hadn't thought that far ahead. Uh, so I've, I've put a Cortland Compact Dye 9 on because, well, I like the line, cast really far. Um, gets down deep and I think the profile will work quite nicely uh, and I'm going to put on two like hot head stragglers nothing particularly fancy on a 18 foot leader evenly spaced apart and I'm going to just look to fish them a couple of feet off the bottom if I can so I'll go down deep and as soon as I start hitting the deck I'll, I'll just speed it up a bit. Uh, the one thing that's consistent is the depth. The fish are, um, we are seeing fish on the top but we're not catching them fish. We are catching the fish that are maybe sitting a couple of feet above the bottom and uh, you've got to get your flies down. My only reservation about going to a tip line is I know that a couple of my flies will be just sacrificial. What we're looking to do then is catch on the point fly and the dropper immediately above the point fly. I think uh, the two other flies above them they're not going to do anything. They're fishing far too high in the water. But we'll see how we get on. It'll be a nice change of pace for me and I'll be interested to see how Ben gets on stripping the big and ugly. Right, so I think this is my fourth cast on the uh, die nine, just pulling two little kind of straggle taddy pattern type things. And uh, I've had missed one on the hang, hooked one on the hang, and then I've just had one halfway back, just figure of eighting, nice and steady. And it looks like it's a really good fish. Um, normally when you say that, Pings off. There we go. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, he wanted that. Well guys, what I wanted to do in today's video was go through some summer fishing tactics. Unfortunately, Farmoor has surpassed our expectations and uh, it doesn't seem to matter what we try, everything seems to be working today. The fighting quality of the fish is exceptional here considering that it's been boiling hot for weeks and the water temperature is uh, extremely hot. The fish have given a really good account of themselves today and there's been plenty of them. We've caught on a variety of different lines and methods and we've caught on a variety of different flies and I'm going to show you them at the end of the video. So Ben, how do you think it's gone today? I don't think it could have gone any better, <laughs> to be honest. Given the conditions, it's fished exceptionally well. The water's really clear, 
We've had great fun fishing deep buzzers, ripping takes. We've been fishing lures. I won't mention what you've been fishing, but some pretty nasty <laughs> stuff as well. It's been quite good fun. And, and you can see the fish follow the flies right up as well and taking them. So it's been really good fun. It's been all about depth today. As long as we hit the depth, we've caught fish. Yeah, I would agree. I think um, the clarity of water's helped. So even though sometimes Ben and I have both caught fish in the higher layers of the water, uh, bringing our flies back at speed. And what we think's happening is because of the clarity of water, the fish are coming from deep and intercepting the flies. But the willingness to chase today has really surprised me. I didn't think there'd be a lot of energy in these fish, but they really have um, been up for it. I think we've been fortunate. The cloud cover is only just starting to burn off as um, we're coming to the end of the day. And it is only actually quarter to three in the afternoon. Unfortunately, I've got a wedding anniversary party to go to and I'm going to have to call it a day early. But thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions at all, please stick them in the comments section below. And I'll see you all next time.